I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. Hi, my name is Sylvia Snell Hudson, and the topic that I want to talk about today is on the close of the 50s and 60s. I have a hypothesis about this, is that the clothes show conformity, and there was a reason for it. I really think that when you had been through the Depression where you couldn't buy anything, and then through the war where you still couldn't buy anything because there weren't any materials available, the 50s was kind of a blossoming time to have clothes, and I think women really appreciated being able to go home and look feminine. That's not the usual way people think of the 50s. They think of the 50s as being a repressive time, but I really don't think it, it was. I went to Lincoln School, and I started in first grade, and I went all the way through eighth grade, and then I went through high school and I graduated in 1963. So I'm going to talk about the clothes that I wore during that time frame. Again, always in dresses. When I was little, you would climb on the monkey bars or do a cartwheel and somebody would always say, I see London, I see France, I see Sylvia's underpants. Because you always had your underpants showing under that dress. So I got told that a lot. Around 1956, we started wearing full skirts, and the way we got those skirts to stick way out is we had these slips that you had to starch. And if your mother was good at it, your skirts stuck way out, and my friend's mother knew just how to starch it, and my mom, not so much. A little embarrassing. We had the craziest shoes I think I've ever seen. They had to be Spaldings, and they had to be Bucks. And these bucks were saddled shoes made of leather, but they had chalk all over them. And you had to carry your bag with your chalk, and your chalk was all powdered for them. The chalk got on chairs and rugs, and people weren't very happy about it. And the soles of the shoes had to have Vaseline on them so that they wouldn't get stuck with any of the chalk. What a ridiculous style that was. When I was graduating from eighth grade, you had to buy a special blouse called a midi blouse. And you had a blue silk tie around it, a pleated blue skirt. And boys had to have blue pants, a white shirt, and a blue tie to match. I don't know that anybody ever complained about it or said they couldn't afford these outfits, but we had that was the way you had to do it. There was no choice. When you went to San Francisco shopping, you wore a full dress and nylons and heels and a hat and your purse had to match your heels and you had to have gloves. And one of the things that we all said, we would look over and there'd be a tourist with their white shoes on. Oh, they must be tourists. They don't know you never ever wear anything but black shoes in San Francisco. That's how fussy they were about everything. Now, if you went in to shop, they always had a seamstress. And they'd say, oh, dearie, I think it's a little bit wide in the sleeves. We'll just have Mrs. Uh, So-and-so be right up. Just wait just a moment. And she'd come up, and she'd use a little chalk and measure it and maybe take the sleeves down a little bit. And then they'd say, now, if you two want to just go shopping for a little while, or maybe how about you go have lunch, we'll have this ready for you in just a half an hour. Now, all the clothes had wide seams, so if you needed something let out, they could actually let it out. If you look at seams now, there's not an extra piece of material in any way. They could never do that. And I don't know if it was a lot more expensive, but I think clothes have really gotten much, much cheaper. In high school, my favorite outfit was an orange skirt and an orange sweater. But the strange part was, underneath I also had an orange bra and an orange slip and an orange girdle. And I had to have a girdle to hold up my nylons. And if you sat 
quickly, you might hurt yourself with one of those stays from your girdle. Now, I weighed less than 100 pounds, so the idea that I had to wear a girdle is kind of ridiculous, but people would say, well, you might jiggle in the back if you, if you don't have your girdle on. So there I was, a freshman in high school, in my girdle. Really, when you talk about the 60s, where they say, oh, well, the hippie movement started in the 60s, it's really about 65. In 64, the Beatles came. You started having the free speech movement in Berkeley, and you had some riots on campuses. And uh, then the Summer of Love was in 1967. Now, during all this time, I was still wearing dresses to everything, except you might have something on the weekend where you wear pants, but mostly, you still had dresses on for anything important. Interesting, as I've grown up, I've talked to other women about this, and every woman has a story to tell you about this. Uh, my sister was a teacher, and one of the teachers wore pants to school, and my sister thought, well, I think I should support her in wearing pants because it makes a lot more sense than wearing high heels when you're teaching first grade. So my sister wore pants and she was really worried on the way to school, what would happen? I talked to another woman who worked in an office for a hospital and she said she wore a pantsuit into work and her boss was really upset, but he didn't say anything. I started working at Pacific Telephone in 1969 and we were going to have a walkout if we weren't allowed to wear pants at work. And I can remember being so nervous. What would we do? Well, after that, the Pacific Telephone decided that, yes, we could wear pants. They should look like a suit. It should be a suit jacket and pants that matched. These were called pantsuits. And the first thing that you could wear were supposed to be pantsuits. Now, all of this has changed. If you're wearing pants, it really happened because somebody in the 70s decided to take a chance at their work and so that's the way it is. Thank you very much.